with its fast growing popularity and fan base. Fan base. It's top tier animation that even some cartoons are incapable of beating. In my opinion, and also Grace is here's opinion. I'll put a link to his version of this in the link in the description. And a not so overwhelming cast. I think it's time Solar Balls gets a good evil. Except this except and this is my version. It's not fully dependent on this of Uranus here has already done uh, his own version, and now, now it's time for my shot. The summer's almost over, and the most recent video, Earth 11, has been released to us. He better apologize when he comes back. It's not like the Earthlings need him or anything. Okay. Now, I'm gonna start with the most good, in my opinion, and I'm gonna work my way down to the most uh, cruel and vicious of the characters in this show. And the gold medal of good goes to Saturn. Now in most of the episode in a couple episodes Saturn is just a background character, but in some of his appearances like the moons of Saturn and why does he and why does Saturn have rings, he gets larger roles. Recently in one with his moons, who I'll will get to later. In short, Saturn is actually pretty sweet and nice. He doesn't seem to harbor any ill will towards any of the other planets or moons or celestial objects. He seems to be quite sensitive, as when Venus yelled at him, he, he began crying. In reality, Saturn is just a sweet heart who wants to see the good in everyone no matter how mean they might be. Even to those who might not want his company, like Uranus. Are you guys even listening to me? Well, the silver medal of good goes to Astro Dude's wife, or simply Astro Wife. She is shown to be quite sweet and a caring mother to her son. And she also cares about Astro Dude. One fault about her is that, well, she doesn't really get the, enough screen time to show oh, acts of good or bad, but from what we do see of Astro Wife, she is a, well, a very good wife. Also, sorry about that, too. That was uncalled for. The bronze medal of good goes to Saturn's favorite moon, Titan. Saturn's moon? You're a moon? <laughs> no way! Why'd you say that? You'll and uh, over his time in Solar Balls, he has began to quite develop as a character in the, in this show. Hope oh, he he was fa quite fascinated by Earth, but when he went up to talk to him, but then Earth began to shun pretty much all moons by saying that they should know their place. Moons should know their place. And af and after that, Titan wouldn't reappear until the two-part episode a Mission to Titan. I'm happy to help. Really? You promise? I promise. But then, and when Astro Dude refused to, Titan got mad and forced him inside of him. And, and but the moon came and tried to help, but it wasn't much use. The real reason Titan gets the bronze medal, bronze medal of good is because of his fascination with thing, with life, and that uh, in Mission to Titan, Astro Dude found life under Titan's surface. The, the next spot on the on the list is going to Solar System's resident brainiac, Jupiter. Now Jupiter isn't really given that much spotlight, but he got a little bit more credit cred in the Moons of Jupiter Part Two series, which I've done a full episode on. But but that's besides the point. And he's usually the one the planets come to when they need info about st about scientific stuff. 
And in many ways, Jupiter is very helpful in, in these scenario, very scenarios the planets put themselves in. I may be more like the sun than you, but it was born from special circumstances. The next spot is going to Mar Earth's former best friend, Mars. Well, if Earth doesn't mind, trust me, he doesn't. Whenever Mars does appear, here he is, he seems to be not negative about much, and he's quite friendly and good to get along with. He he is sort of beginning to have a bond with Venus, and the one negative quality Mars kind of has is that he sometimes just doesn't know when to quit, and sometimes he held, holds on unnecessary grudges, if, uh, if you get what I'm saying. God, what's the deal, Venus? And he is just, a uh, he's sort of like the voice of reason in the solar system. Really? Mars divert? Next on the good list goes to Astro Dude himself. Throughout the series, Astro Dude is seen trying to help those around him in some sort of way, but sometimes he ends up just causing conflicts, but he's like a, you know, a nice agent of chaos. If you think about it. Another pink sorry fling. Yeah. I'm leaving. Wait, did I just end the world? Whenever he is around, which is like half the time, he is going to be a very nice man and, and good father. Mister Dude has been sort of a punching bag to the solar system. Most of the inner, like he's been treated a bit poorly by Venus. And Titan, and in two part minis, and two two part mini series. But most of all, sir, Astro Dude just wants to be good at his job. But people like Houston are trying to mess up with that. The next spot on this this ranking in the good tier is going to the smallest planet, Mercury. Now, Mercury is is kind of a hard one to rank because he doesn't get really that much screen time in the show and now he's only a, like a background character or with not that many appearances Dude, ben Mercury, you're just going through tectonic activity tectonic what now it's just with all the years of being shot by solar flares from the sun mercury has just had it and and all these years of this have taken a toll on him. I don't care anymore. I'm sick to the core of the sun's solar flare. Next is one of the newer characters, Io. Io is one of Jupiter's moons and frequently featured in the two-part Jupiter's moon, the moons of Jupiter miniseries. <laughs> I'm so excited! I'm gonna. <laughs> And Io is shown to, is shown to be full of energy and enthusiasm about many things, and it turns out he's also the densest moon, which I didn't know. I, I, I'm 13. He helped Callisto in Earth's Moon Defeat series and, and sent him back from the heck from whence he came. Without him, they probably wouldn't have been able to be rid of that that weird dwarf planet. Mm -hmm. The last characters in the good tier what characters I, I say that because the last spot is shared by two. Those being Pluto and Sharon. And look at each other's day and night. Ha, hey, what's up? Hey, Pluto, you now, Pluto is sort of like the underdog of the solar system and he dreams of being in the spotlight. He's kind of like Mercury, and it turns out he is open to making friends, where he tried to be friends with Neptune in the, in the titular planet's first major appearance in the show. Pluto may be tiny, but he can he could probably be a good friend to you if you ever come across him. Hopefully we get a, another video that involves Pluto in some form. Can you stop that? Oh! <laughs> Where did you come from? Forget this, I'm hanging out with the dwarf planets. Now we get to the gray area. And this is reserved for 
the characters in Solar Balls who are not, who don't do enough to be considered evil, but don't do enough to be considered really that good either. The first entrant is another one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. What if? Uh, Europa seems to be quite confident, like, your confident female type about things, and she, she is quite nice to most people, although, uh, one condition, Europa, most of the time, um, she, but just don't call any other moons a babe while you're around her. You quit dreaming, Colisto, I don't Next. On the list is Earth's Moon, or whatever his actual name is. In most of his appearances, or the Moon is 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 just in the background, moving around, looking at other people or planets. Made to Earth? Yeah, that. Well, I couldn't hear the conversation. Usually, when the Moon is seen on screen in and it, and he, like when he does have a major role, sorta, he is quite like calm about stuff and doesn't get mad unless he has a good reason. We discovered something about the moon. It's drifting away. The next spot goes to your anus or Uranus. As my name is Uranus. Now Uranus is like the punching bag of the. So of the I the gas giants because he's usually mostly picked on because of his hilarious name. Uranus. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I just had to. It was mandatory. <laughs> anyway, Uranus is he is uh most of the time he's. Usually pretty calm, as shown in Venus Wants a Makeover, and most of the time, Uranus is uh, quite nice, but if you make too many jokes about his name, he will get mad, and you will not like it when he gets angry. Plus, he mostly just has conversations with like Saturn and Neptune. Next is another one of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede, and Ganymede prides himself as being the largest moon in the solar system, and it also appears that he wants to have a marital status, as he wants to do it with Europa, showing why he calls, keeps calling her Babe. Trouble with Saturn? We'll do, babe! What? And Ganymede is quite well. He can be nice, but he sometimes doesn't know when to quit when it comes to Venus, and he things can get out of hand when he's around. What's your story, Titan? My story? Yeah. Next is one of the less recent characters introduced, Neptune. Neptune is the most recent of the planets introduced in Solar Balls, and he is a little unstable due to being so far away from the sun. He is what, as described, kind of jelly, literally. He is also the comic relief of the show, and whenever he does appear, he's always quite zany and funny. And he always knows how to lighten the mood it, one, in one way or another. I'm kind of jelly, <laughs> literally. This may sound weird, but sometimes Neptune can be kind of cute. This may come as a shock to some, but my next entrant is Earth. Now, at the start of the series, Earth is actually quite helpful when it comes to things. He helped Mercury get out of his his chance that he thought where he thought he was going to explode. Although as the series progressed, Earth became a little more unstable and and the more jerk to everyone around them. And let's not forget his rude statement about moons in the truth of Titan. Don't say it! 
He's just a moon, okay? We're nothing alike. And, um, after this point in the show, into an even nicer guy. He, he begin, he's beginning to take accountability that what he did was wrong, and that she, and that he should just go and apologize to Kaiden. The most, the most shocking example of this is in Solar Boss's most recent video, Earth Alone, where, where he has no moon and no friends because he was being a jerk. He experiences hallucinations of his friends, specifically Mars, Venus, and his moon. But because of all this, he basically goes insane and he goes on a rant and and he and uh, his hallucinations make him cry. But thank goodness the moon actually comes back and answers moons and answers Earth's prayers. Who's? Wait. Hey, Earth. And the next ranking goes to not one character, but a whole bunch. The Country Balls. Even for you, that is low, China. And the Country Balls only appear in part one of Earth Alone so far. They'll probably also appear in part two. And with the most notable being USA Ball. And USA Ball has that kind of tough attitude, and the Country Balls get a lot more screen time on the Mr. Spherical channel. I'm not going to make a link there because that channel is inappropriate. And they are quite, and they don't really do that much. The only things they really do are, are, are make doing negotiations and stuff, and they they kind of threaten to take away Houston's money, but that kind of makes sense because Houston is a bit of a jerk. Hey, I'm done funding your company. You're gonna lose so much more than 30 bucks now. You can say that again, bruh. Next is another dual ranking between two moons. Phobos and Deimos. Mars moons. You can crash into Mars! And we can use the space debris to grow bigger! Both Phobos and Deimos are shown to be kinda unstable and crazy. And they're probably not too happy about it due to their very small size in the solar system. You hear that, Deimos? He called us nobody! I heard him, Phobos! I heard him well! You're the- This is- The reason I don't have- I don't have much to say about Phobos and Deimos because they don't get much Dutch time to shine on solar balls. So I'm just gonna have to leave them here. Moving to the bottom tier of the gray area uh, is one shot character, Eris. Dwarf planet. I'm Eris, by the way. Eris is um kind of aggravated easily, and she, and she apparently is quite lonely considering she does not meet too many planets. It's around where she lives, it's, and she may be. She may or may not be related to Pluto or something. You know, it's since they're both dwarf planets. Well, Air and and but when Uranus and Saturn asked for Eris's help, she straight out left. So that's why and that's why she's so down in the gray area. But I don't have much to say about Eris since she only like has one appearance so far. She'll probably appear again eventually. Second to last spot. In the gray area shared by many characters. Saturn's moons. Besides Titan. These of course include Di Dioni, Mimas, Enceladus, Iapetus, Hyperion, and many others. Including Titan. But this is about the other moons besides Titan. And Saturn's other moons don't necessarily get that much screen time. When uh, that they are, once Saturn reveals to them that his rings are made from dead moons, they get very mad about it, and they don't want, and they just don't forgive him when he tries to apologize. So if I can have your forgiveness, we can all get along, and I'll never consume you all. And since there's not very much to say about. That sounds other moons. I'll just leave it here. The final character in the gray area is Jupiter's final moon, Callisto. Callisto is sort of the goth of Jupiter's moons. 
she's always all dark and gloomy, and she she never she never really smiles. Like like not that much, and, and she has specified that she only has nightmares. You quit dreaming, Callisto. I don't have dreams, only nightmares. She apparently detests Io, though for him apparently being the weirdo of Jupiter's moons. This Callisto might not be the best friend that you were looking for. And now, we've arrived at the inner belly, the underbelly of the solar system. This is the, these are the evil. The, the first spot in the evil tier goes to Venus. Venus is the hothead of the inner solar system. He, he is always mad about something, more than likely, and, and, and is always yelling at, at other planets for being, re quote, reckless idiots. Though he does have a few factors that keep him from going any higher. For one thing, he, he um, was open to being Earth's friend for a while. Oh, but when he found out it was for status for validation, Venus decided to pack it up and leave Earth because he didn't feel like a friend. Wait, Venus! Where are you going? This wasn't a real friendship. On the inside, Venus may be a hothead, but underneath all that rough exterior, he he could be really nice. Next is Astro Sun. Astro Sun is kind of. He seems to, in my opinion, he doesn't really care about his dad, and, uh, and, well, because he never interacts with him, and is completely oblivious, and just, since Astro Sun is so minor, I decide, well, there's not enough info about him, so I'll just have to leave him at that. Next is Ceres. Show yourself! <laughs> Ceres is kind of the ghost child of the solar system, and he barely gets any screen time, and, it, and he appears in Siblings in the Asteroid Belt and The Moons of, Sa of Jupiter Part 2, in which he has a larger role. He is like a, like the main villain of the episode, and he repeatedly pelts Jupiter's moons with asteroids. They're eventually able to overpower him, and then he flies away defeated. Next on the podium of evil is the dark side of the moon. Ah, so in a way, I am the dark side of the moon. The dark side of the moon is kind of rude, and he wanted to crash into Earth's surface at the start of his debut appearance. Though actually, he appears quite frequently, but oh, he's always behind the regular moon's face, but then he's asleep. He also appeared in Mission to Titan Part 2 for a little bit to explain to Titan why Astro Dude who would have would have died under his surface. Of course drowning. From that he, the dark side of the moon isn't really that helpful. The penultimate spot on the spectrum of evil goes to the Venera robots. Back! The Venera robots are the main villains of the Surviving Venus part miniseries on Solar Balls, and they try to capture Astro Dude and force him to, quote, join them. What the Venera robots? Ah! The Venera robots don't really show any sort of emotions because, well, they're androids, and and I think Star will probably try to recruit, recruit what's left of them on Venus. If he can get there. And in short, the Venera robots try to kill Astro Dude, and that and according to this, there's a pretty big sin there. We've gotten to the good part now. The top three most evil. The bronze medal of evil goes to Houston is Astro Dude's Houston. Houston is Astro Dude's boss and he and the mission general at R O at T S A R. He usually just likes to rush the mission around and and doesn't really care for the priorities of others. And at first he wanted to 
who uh, pick Veritasium to go to space rather than Astrodude. Somebody because Veritasium had a YouTube channel, and he's quite idiotic as well. And he and and all in all, Houston is just a jerk, jerk who doesn't care about anyone, not even his employees. Wait, he, he's alive? Oh, uh, that's good to hear, Astrodude. I'm happy for you. How is he still alive? The silver metal of evil is going to the evil robot android, Sar. Sar was an android created by Rotsar to go and help Astrodude when he was about to die on Mars due to having to hold his breath there. And for a while, Rotsar was just a robot, but after he overheard a conversation on the phone with Astrodude, he then developed, start to develop some sort of consciousness and began to become malevolent. Beyond your limits and controlled nature, maybe we are simply the next step. I've seen enough sci-fi movies to know where this is heading. Hiya! He then goes on a rant about how he will enslave the universe via all the robots that NASA and Rotsar have sent to space. Since Rotsar and since Sar has only made a single appearance in the show so far, although he will reappear in the in the part one of Can We Colonize Mars or Can We Terraform Mars? Overall, Sar is quite an evil android, but there is one more that outshines him in terms of in terms of evilness. And judging by the channel, you probably know who it is. That's right, the gold medal of evil goes to the sun himself. <laughs> I don't really need to describe the sun for you to know how creepy he is, and he's basically a psychopath in in, this, in the show. Described to himself, he has intense mood swings, throws around flares for no reason. And he, he has an, an incredible mean streak. He was just portrayed as being very creepy and aggressive and kind of a villain, like kind of the main villain of the show, though he's not pure evil, or just uh, broken, according to Shorts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more.